Good evening, everybody. Mike Naso here with the latest on the tropics. It is Saturday night, September 9th, 2023, and September 9th, 10th, 11th is generally the climatological peak of the hurricane season. When you look at activity going all the way back to 1944, usually right around September 10th or so is the climatological peak of the hurricane season, and you get another little bump in uh, early October. But it is all downhill from here, but right now, we are in the thick of it. Here's the latest satellite imagery of the Atlantic. We have Hurricane Lee, a one-time Category 5 hurricane. It has weakened dramatically over the last 36 hours from a Category 5 down to a Category 2. But in doing so, because of the wind shear, its wind field has expanded. And so it's a larger hurricane, and it could strengthen again. We'll talk about Lee. We have Margo, which is going to be a slow developer. It's in the face of wind shear here from Hurricane Lee and this upper level low to the north. However, Margo should eventually become a hurricane too, and there will be some interaction with Lee as the two of them spin into the North Atlantic. We have a new invest area that I just circled there south of the islands, and that could be a tropical system. Whether or not it gets swept up in the wake of Margo or continues a little further west, we just don't know and another wave leaving Africa that we're going to talk about. Here is the latest on Hurricane Lee as of 11 p.m. Atlantic time. Lee was at 21.0 north, 59.9 west. Winds down to 105 as a Category 2 hurricane, and uh, reminds me a lot of Hurricane Francis. If you're old enough to remember 2004, for some of you young hurricane trackers, we had a Category 4 Hurricane Francis that rolled right into the Bahamas, and right around the time it got to San Salvador, it got sheared very similar to Hurricane Lee, and it weakened dramatically all the way down to 105 miles an hour, but it expanded in size, and uh, the wind field got very large, and it had a big ragged eye, and it came ashore along the eastern coastline of Florida. Lee is now expanding its wind field because of the weakening, but it should come back to a Category 3 and then a Category 4 hurricane, and still be a powerful hurricane through the latter part of next week. And it looks like it'll be eventually making that northward turn, but where exactly that turn occurs, we just don't know. Right now it's moving west-northwest at 9, so it's slowed down. And this is three days out. So you're talking very little movement in the next three days before we get to know exactly where it will turn to the north. The reason it's been weakening is upper-level wind shear and mid-level shear. Look at this upper-level wind shear map. It is being undercut, and that explains why the hurricane weakens so dramatically. To have a Category 4 or 5 hurricane, you really need ideal upper-level conditions, and it had them. That's why it became a Category 5, but the second that wind shear hit, you saw Lee fall apart. It looks like it's going to eventually get into a better environment, and as it bends west, it should eventually intensify back to a major hurricane. Here's the water vapor imagery, and I put this on there to show you any kind of wind that is blowing towards the hurricane that is unfavorable. And notice here this kind of protective barrier that the hurricanes put out in response to the wind shear trying to protect itself. If that barrier collapses in on the hurricane, it will weaken even quicker. But right now, it looks like it's fighting off the shear. It keeps trying to form an eye again, but it's just not that well organized. The uh, aircraft have been zigzagging around it, and the Hurricane Center says 105 miles an hour may be generous. So this might be almost down to a Category 1 hurricane, but through time, it should intensify once again. Here are the computer models. Now, these are the 12Z European models. They're all in good agreement of the very slow motion of Lee as it moves towards the west-northwest and then a turn to the north. And there is some disagreement. Some of the models want to bring it very close to New England, and especially Nova Scotia up here and areas of Newfoundland. So if you are in the Canadian Maritimes, watch Lee very carefully, because even if it turns away from the United States, it could have a direct landfall somewhere there in Atlantic Canada. The GFS ensembles, they were showing the system, some of them bringing it into North Carolina, Long Island, Cape Cod, so that's a little concerning, because until we know for sure that the thing is turning, we cannot rule out the potential that it might bend a little more northwest and make a landfall directly in New England. It's still not out of the realm of possibility, although it is unlikely. It's still something to watch. We think right now, between Hatteras and Bermuda, like we said a few days ago, that turn will probably occur. But again, then it puts the Canadian Maritimes 
right in the line of fire. The key messages from the National Hurricane Center, number one, Lee's core is expected to move well north of the northern Leeward Islands, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico this weekend and early next week. So it will stay away from those areas of the greater Antilles. The uh, dangerous surf and life-threatening rip currents, that's going to occur everywhere. The northern Leeward Islands, northward of Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Turks, Caicos, Bahamas, Bermuda. All of these areas are going to have high surf propagating. And number three, it remains too soon to know what levels of impact, if any, Lee might have along the U.S. East Coast, Atlantic Canada, or Bermuda late next week, especially because it's going to slow down considerably over the southwest Atlantic, and we're not going to know, is it going to come north to Bermuda? Is it going to go more towards the eastern seaboard? Is it going to kind of go between and then out to sea, or between and then up towards Canada? We just don't know. But dangerous surf and rip currents are expected along the U.S. east coast beginning tomorrow on Sunday, and that's going to continue all week because Lee is going to get larger in size. You should continue to monitor updates to the forecast during the next several days. Again, we will see swells propagate away from the hurricane, and it is a strong hurricane. Margo, as of 11 p.m., a tropical storm, 50 miles per hour, is at 21.6 north, 39.1 west, moving northwest at 9. These slow movers this year. They're just dragging a lot. Franklin took his own time. You know, Don was out there. Now we've got Lee taking his time, Margo. And that's uh, racking up accumulated cyclone energy called ACE. That's a whole different thing you could read up on. But Margo is expected to become a hurricane by Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. But it should remain well to the west of the Azores out here in the areas of the Atlantic, not affecting anybody. However, it should be a hurricane, and it's something to watch. The satellite imagery does show it's getting sheared right now from the outflow from Hurricane Lee. And again, that system's bursting. It's trying to develop. It looks like once Lee gets out of the way and Margot kind of moves up here, it will be able to become at least a Category 1 hurricane. So we're going to watch that. This system is looking much better organized south of the Cape Verde Islands. It is now Invest 97L, moving along to the west. The computer models are like a plate of spaghetti with this one. You got up here, you got this, you got that, you got that. They're not even worth looking for. If you're trying to get an idea, you might want to do a line curve like this. Maybe west, west-northwest, a gradual turn, something like that. If you had to get between this craziness and that craziness, it's way too early to tell. We don't have a well-defined center, nothing like that. But it is worth watching because it looks like the system could develop, and some of these models make it a strong hurricane. So this could be a hurricane coming out of the Cape Verde region. Now, the European ensembles, they bring our system here off Africa to the west-northwest and then kind of bend it back west, which is scary because if it gets caught under high pressure, it could get closer to the Bahamas and the eastern seaboard of the U.S. So there goes Lee, there goes Margo, and here comes the next system. And uh, we'll see if the European is onto something. The GFS model, same thing. Here it comes off Africa, and it takes a track generally towards the west-northwest. So we're going to watch this very carefully. Now, some of those models might be hinting not at our invest that I just circled, but at this massive wave behind it. So not only do we have Lee and Margo, but we have Invest 94L and a large wave leaving Africa. So we are going to keep tabs on all of these systems. Right now, the focus will be our Category 2 Hurricane Lee forecast to become a 3 and a 4 and eventually turn but in the meantime, it will cause large swells to propagate all along areas there, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, the Bahamas, towards the east coast of the U.S. Margo, getting beaten up by Lee, will eventually pull north and will strengthen into a hurricane. And this little curly cue down here, could this be our next storm, Nigel? Nigel's a new name. 2017, Hurricane Nate hit Biloxi, caused a lot of damage, was retired. So this would be the first time we use the name Nigel. And after that, could this be our O-Storm, Ophelia? Who knows? The name list is rolling on in this El Nino year that feels very much like a uh, much more active hurricane season than we'd ever see in an El Nino year. So again, we're watching the tropics. I'm Mike Naso with a Saturday night update. Powerful Hurricane Lee, organizing Margo, and two other systems off Africa to watch. I'll talk to you next time.